Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. We're muted. Hey. <laughs> What's up? This is Winning Cures Everything's college football preview show for week number five. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Much to discuss this week. Obviously, if you want to hear about week four, go back and listen to the recap. We uh, we talked a lot about everything. All the, the craziness that happened. Notre Dame, Georgia, the Washington State UCLA game. We actually discussed it about eight hours after it happened. So, we were... Still in shock and still exhausted from what ended up being a much longer night than I told my wife it would be. So, the show is always brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You go find out more information about them for yourself over at tunicatravel.com. Great stuff going on down there. They've got the, the Top Golf Swing Suite, which is absolutely incredible, down at Gold Strike. Obviously, Samstown has a great sports book. Gold Strike got the really nice money line sports book, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? Go check them out for yourself. All of them are great. We've been to all of them. We've been placing bets at all of them basically every weekend. Uh, I didn't do so hot last week, but that's okay. We'll get back on track. We'll, uh, we'll see what's happening. So go to tunicatravel.com. Check it out. Obviously, if you're watching this or listening, please make sure and hit that subscribe button. Leave a nice review if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. Uh, make sure you subscribe on Spotify, Google Podcasts, etc. Or you can always listen to the show over at winningcureseverything.com. You can also watch it on YouTube. I think we might be simulcasting with Facebook soon. I hadn't talked to you about that, but I think that might be a, uh, a thing that happens. So, um, so we're, we're, we're going to have it in more places. And we appreciate y'all's support for making that possible uh, but make sure you hit subscribe on YouTube. Leave us some comments. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Uh, bring in that hate, man. We understand it. You're upset. Everybody's losing. Bring it all in. Give it all to us. We want to hear about it. Leave some comments. Tell us what you like and, and don't like about the show. You ready to fire into week five? Come on. Can you believe we're already, I mean, this will be five weeks in. There's 15 weeks in the season, unless you count the last week in week zero, um, which at that point, that's 17 weeks. Is that right? Week zero and week 16. No, nobody really counts those. I mean, they, you got Army, Navy in one, and then you got, what, Florida and Miami and Arizona, Hawaii in the other one. But either way, you, you got 17 weeks of college football. It's pretty awesome. And then you got all the ball stuff. Anyway, we're like a third of the way through the season after this weekend. That feels that way. Feels that way to me. Does it? Well, the the losing hurts, yes. right? But it does feel like we just started, and good gracious, here here we are, here we are. All right, let's fire this bad boy off. We will start out by telling you that we don't really agree with college game day going to Ohio State in Nebraska. I don't think that's the biggest game of the weekend. I don't think that's the biggest game of the weekend. We were talking about big games to cover, and I, who am always trying to chop these games off, uh, I don't think it's a big game. It's now. I, I think one this. team is incredible. I think the other team is kind of okay. Now, of course, we say that, and this will end up being the one that becomes like the biggest upset, right? But that's, but. that's fine. Big upsets happen. It doesn't mean that we thought they were going to be big games before the the game started, though. No, you're right. right. You're right. Um, Felica did put out, you know, Chris Felica, our buddy from College Game Day, he did put out a tweet uh, because, and, and apparently I'm not the only person that had asked him about this um, because that was my first question. Like, it, it, he was busy this week. He couldn't come on this week. He's probably next week or the week after, one or the other. Um, but it turns out I'm not the only person that asked about this. The Largest spread for a game day game was Clemson minus 37 against Georgia Tech, which was the Thursday night show earlier this year. So I don't really count so that. That doesn't count. But he said largest spread for a Saturday game, Alabama against Auburn in 2011. And that was 34 and a half. Now, that was a rivalry game. Yes, that's, that's a monster game. And that was also 
okay, Alabama, if they win this game, really could get into the BCS championship game without winning their conference. That's right. So that that became a bigger storyline. Uh, the other one that they had was uh, 2016 Western Michigan against Buffalo, which was also 34 and a half. Um, the largest dog to win. But think two- about that though. The, they chose to go to a smaller school of Western Michigan Buffalo. Yeah, that's that's not your typical it's not the, it's game not the day same. environment. Yeah, it's not it's not the same. Um, he did say that the biggest dog to win was 2012 Stanford plus 20 and a half at Oregon. So, you know, like I, I get it. And on the other side, like I understand that you, you got to have massive crowds. And where you were going to get the massive crowd that is the most excited is Lincoln, Nebraska right now. So, totally fair. However, we... We starting there? No, we are not starting in Lincoln. Come on. We are starting in South Bend, Indiana. We are going to Virginia at Notre Dame. Notre Dame, a 12-and-a-half point favorite. The game is at 2.30 p.m. on NBC. It's at Notre Dame Stadium in South Bend, Indiana. Virginia head coach Bronco Mendenhall is now the betting favorite to be Michigan's head coach next year. Do you know that? I did not know that. We both... Do like Bronco a lot. Yes. He is plus 300 to be Michigan's head coach next year. That's at Bet Online. Is Jim Harbaugh like an option to be, if he, somebody you can bet on? Mm, no. So that makes no sense that they just assume it's 100% he won't be there. Eh. I mean, look, you, you got to look at it this or way. Or they're just going to take everybody's money. Anybody Jim Harbaugh that, is going to stay, and they're just going to say thanks for the money. Anybody that's dumb enough to bet on something like that. And if you are one of those people, we apologize. We don't mean any offense. Mm, um, I, I don't. I disagree. But I, I, I mean, I mean a little offense. <laughs> Virginia four and two against the spread. No rolls here. Their uh, their last six on the road. They are four and one against the spread in their last five as a road dog. Notre Dame two and four against the spread in their last six as a home favorite. The question here is, how beat up is Notre Dame after going to Georgia? How big of a letdown is this after coming oh so close to winning that football game? Um, I mean, your, your stats here, Virginia averages 34 minutes time of possession. They are number 12 in the country in opponents' yard per play. Notre Dame, number 19 in the country in offensive yards per play. Um, this is a football team in Virginia that likes to keep the ball away. Yes, sir. And a Notre Dame team that likes to move the ball up and down the field, and it doesn't matter about time of possession. Yep. Um, I, I'm curious if so, this is a letdown. I, I, I don't know. The beat-up part, I think, is real, because I think playing Georgia is a physical thing. It's, I think it's a, a very difficult thing to do. What do they call it? The body blow factor? That's right. But I don't think the letdown is there. And maybe we, on the media side and fan side, saw that as a good loss. And Brian Kelly and them don't believe in that. And they they are disappointed. They are let down. And, and it gets to them. But, man, if I go into Georgia, in the Sanford Stadium, in that crowd, in that environment, and I give them all they want, and I lost one quarter out of the four quarters, and it cost me the game, Man, I gotta believe I can hang with those guys, and yeah. that means I can't let down anybody. I gotta hope for chaos. I gotta go undefeated. I gotta hope Georgia goes undefeated, and I gotta hope I get another shot at them in the playoffs. That, I mean, that's that's what you have to believe and you have to preach. Which means you can't say, "Oh, well, there's the season." Yeah. Now there is some, "Oh, there's the season," because we all work under the assumption. Clemson's not going to be challenged. They're not going to be within 20 points of anybody the rest of the season. They're going to moonwalk into this thing. We know that the SEC winner is going to be in. So two of these four spots are taken with Ohio State and Wisconsin. you got to think one One of of those those. two teams are probably got a really good shot. And then you got to hope for Oklahoma to to fall. To fall. You need need chaos in the Big 12. You've already got chaos in the Pac-12. And you need as much collateral damage in the SEC as you can get. 
but you need a lot of things to happen. I would not be upset after that loss, and I would still yeah. think hope has to be alive, and I am all over. Virginia is not a team you overlook. No. I mean, it would. I would feel this could be an overlook letdown game if they're coming into the Notre Dame Navy game. Like a team that you're yeah. going to be maybe a 20-point favorite fan. See, I, the, I don't this just seemed like a it. lot of points. I, I agree it's a lot of points, which I'm 100% stay away on the pick. If I got to make a pick because of we're doing it, I think I take the Irish. I think they're looking to kick somebody's butt. After a loss like that, I think they're looking to kick somebody's butt instead of feeling sorry for themselves. I'm going the opposite way. Okay. I think Virginia likes to eat up possessions. I do love Bronco Miller. Um, He's hard to pick against. I do think Notre Dame wins this game at home. But, man, I have seen Notre Dame not cover at home so many oh, times. Oh, yeah. Um, well, Virginia fans are going to show up for this game. We talk about that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, you get a chance once a decade to go to, to, to South Bend? Yeah, we're buying all those tickets. Well, and, and it, so we've seen Virginia look really good this year. Oh, uh, well, and we believe in Bronco. Yeah, but, but we also, last week, really the last two weeks, right, they had the Florida State thing. Then they had the letdown against Old Dominion, where I mean they were they were trailing. True. Um, and then they had to fight back. They got a twenty-eight to seventeen win. They were twenty-seven point favorite, twenty-eight point favorite, whatever. Yeah, it was. but uh, you know. Um, but they that, that couple, stuff happens. They had a couple down weeks, but they still still winning games. Yeah, still winning games. But I think they have been pinpointing this one because this is their shot. They don't get Clemson this year, right? So there's nobody in their division that's like that that you can go out and make a statement with. This is their statement game. So in this spot, I mean, I, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Virginia plus the twelve and a half. I think I'm I'm rolling Notre Dame to win, but you've got Notre Dame minus twelve and a half there. It's it's a lot of points. I'm gonna stay away. We gotta pick it for big games. I'm telling you who I would side with if I took it. I can, uh, I, but I love this Irish team. I think this is. I, I was on record in the recap. I think this is the and I might have said this before the the Georgia game. I don't remember. I, I do think this is the best Notre Dame team Brian Kelly's had. Yeah, I think it probably is, talent-wise and everything complete, else. Complete, most complete. They've lost a lot of dudes to the NFL the last couple of years. Well, and, and, and it they've seems got seems to be just reloaded. It's, it's continuity, right? So like, they finally got a good offensive coordinator and a good defensive coordinator at the same time, like, and they're keeping them. And it's you know that this is a pretty big deal. Uh, so, yeah, so our picks, Virginia plus 12.5 for me with Notre Dame winning, and you've got Notre Dame minus 12.5. Let's move on from there. USC at Washington. Washington, a 10-point favorite. It's at 2.30 p.m. on Fox in Husky Stadium in Seattle, Washington. USC has won outright five of the last six in Seattle, but Washington 6-1 and one against the spread in their last seven games. The only loss was to Cal. Uh USC, number 33 in the country at 6.64 yards per play. Washington, number 32 with 6.66 opponents yards per play. USC, number 78. They're giving up 5.63 yards per play. Washington, number 43, giving up 4.92. So that that sways a little more in Washington's favor. I was say that. Uh, Slovis. Might still be out, so it, it may be Matt Fink, who was the fourth-string quarterback before the season started. Uh, he's probably going to start here. I USC has the talent Correct. to stay with just about anybody. The issue here is that Matt Fink gave Washington film. And I talked with you about this on the recap. Yep. The way that he throws the football, it floats a little bit. And he's a touch pass guy instead of a just a fired. Yeah, yeah, there's not a, there's not a ton of arm strength there, which is why he was four string, um, which worked really well against a super aggressive Utah defense. With Washington, who always has a great secondary, Utah of course is the front seven. That's right. right? Washington has a formidable front seven with a fantastic secondary. You float those passes against these boys. Yeah. And, and I think they're going to take the ball away. That's exactly what I was thinking here. Um, My, where I see this team, and I don't mean to cut you off. No, I apologize. you The difference between Chris Peterson and, and, Clay, Hilton. and Clay Hilton is scary see, to me. Now, but, I think they got dudes together. 
No, and, but it, it's not just that because we right. thought this about Kyle Whittingham too, right? Cor- it's, yeah, but it's different. Quarterback, Kyle Whittingham didn't have the quarterback that, no, you're that, right about that. that Easton is. Quarterback and head coach are so far in one side favorite. I don't know what the number is. I don't know what the number's gonna be at game time because it's gonna keep moving. I'm I just I'm just taking Chris Peterson. I'm taking Jacob Eason. I, I'm just gonna trust that they're just a better football team. I'm rolling the same way. Are you okay, really? Yeah, I'm, I I'm going. You, I thought you might be because USC's got dudes. They've got dudes, but I I don't trust Clay Helton for nothing. So, so Washington minus 10 is the pick for both of us here. I think he can sneak up on teams, which is what he's done this year so far. Oh, we're in trouble. They're the backup quarterback, another backup quarterback, and nobody gives them really a shot to, oh, man, they upset him. Oh, or they go into BYU and they win that game, and then they – but then they, they lose. They, they lost. Oh, they lost. But, but, but like they lose that. They, then their third string that's, quarterback. That's where. Or whatever. That's where your common opponent is, by the way. Oh yeah. I mean, One Washington of these... blasted BYU in Provo. USC lost to BYU. I would in Provo. defend BYU a little bit. You they, they played a really tough. Schedule. You talk about body blows. Oh yeah. Those guys haven't had a week off yet. And they they've played four straight Power Five teams. Like just. Whew. That's, so. a, that's a rough, and they've traveled across the country, you know. I get it. Anyway. Let's We're move both on. the same way. Yeah, Washington minus 10. All right, let's move on from there. Let's talk about Iowa State at Baylor. Now, I am surprised that neither one of these teams is ranked at this point. Iowa State obviously would have been had they gotten, the, I mean, they lost at home by one with like a six-hour weather delay, all that, to Iowa, who is still a really good team. Um, but I think whoever wins this game – Probably going to end up ranked after this week. I'll agree with that. This is the the battle for, like, third place in the Big 12. And it could be the battle for, like, a Big 12 championship game appearance. Like, yeah. this is – one of these teams could actually legitimately win the I Big had, 12 conference. I had these teams being in the consideration for yeah. who, could, who could play Oklahoma yeah. for the Big There's, 12 title. So, it's – you. the majority of the media have Oklahoma up Texas. here in Texas. That's right. And then you've got Iowa State and Baylor, and like maybe TCU, but TCU I've, has fallen out. You know how I love Gary Patterson, but it didn't matter. I yeah, think, he, I think there's a talent gap between him and Iowa State and Baylor. Uh, the total has gone under in ten of Iowa State's last eleven games on the road, so keep an eye on that. Well, Matt Rule is going to coach him up and yeah. slow this Iowa State team down too. I do think both these teams bring the defense. Oh what's yeah. The, what's the total? Uh, see, I don't have it written down because it yeah. wasn't out when I was looking at All it. All right, give me this. Baylor is easy to find. 55 and a half. 55 and I would go under that. I would, too. That's a lot lower than I was thinking it was going to be, though, just because Big 12 games are always so big. Let's see. Um, all right, so, yeah, the, the total is on under 10 of Iowa State's last 11 on the road. Iowa State, 3-0 and against the spread in their last three as a road favorite. Baylor, however... Seven and two in their last nine against the spread as a home dog. Love this coaching matchup, like you were just I, talking about. I Matt know. Campbell oh. and and Matt Rule, um, just ridiculous. Like absolutely fantastic yards per play. And this is a, a very important metric for everybody to pay attention to, right? Iowa State number six in the country yards per play, seven point nine three yards. And you're like, oh man, all right, that's pretty good. Baylor. Number 10, 7.53. Yeah. Opponent's yards per play, Iowa State, number 23. They only give up 4.42 yards per play. Baylor, number 10, (laughs) 4.06 yards per play. So good. Look, this quarterback matchup between Charlie Brewer and Brock Purdy is, it it is going to be fascinating. I'm going to tell you, this is, if I was game day, I would go to this game. I don't care that both of them aren't ranked. These are two big fa- now. I know they've already been to an Iowa State game. That's the problem. Yeah, that's, that's um, kind of the problem. But but that should let you know that man, there are some a, there's some dud weeks. This is an incredible. Like, no, I don't know about that. Oh, come on now, the good people of Iowa. Abe's no, I'm saying you. there's some dud weeks in that like they are struggling to figure out what games to go to. Right. I know these aren't the two biggest fans. I know Nebraska and Ohio State especially dwarf both of these teams in fan bases. Yeah. This is going to be an unbelievable matchup. It is 2.30 p.m. 
ESPN McLean Stadium in Waco, Texas. I'll be by watching the way. every second of this game. I'm gonna have all three TVs set up. I know you do. You gotta watch your boys. Look, oh, no, no, I, four. I'm, I'm not, have I'm four not screens. watching Alabama Ole Miss. I don't need to see I'm, that. I'm gonna have Bama but, Ole Miss on. I, um, I get that. Like I look, I don't watch LSU when they beat up on high school teams either. But, but no, that's that's what I'm saying. Is you you got that at two thirty. You've also got the Virginia Notre Dame at two thirty. USC oh, Washington hell. at two thirty. I thought that was and like was, a four o'clock game. No, no. These the first three games we have discussed are all at two thirty p.m. Why does Notre Dame do this to me? See, they, that NBC game used to be like we're going to be between the two thirty and the seven o'clock game, which which would have been perfect. It's right? what I love. Just give me staggering these games, just to give me like a two hour buffer you're, to see uh, is this game good or not. Your your six p.m. night game. Now, I'm uh, so one you've got your six thirty Ohio State Nebraska, six p.m. on ESPN you've got Mississippi State and Auburn, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean. Here, I got my schedule right here. I'll pull it up and we'll gotcha. see. Um, Gary, always prepared. Always prepared. Always prepared. All right, so our 6 p.m. games. We've got Stanford at Oregon State on the Pac-12 network. UConn Nobody at UCF. Nobody can watch that anyway. Exactly. Um, well, some people can. You and I can. Well, our, our California people can. Yes. They get to see that game. And, and a few select people here in the, the mighty Mid-South. Just saying. Bootleg TV. <laughs> Colorado State at Utah State on CBS Sports Network. Kentucky at South Carolina on the SEC Network. NC State at Florida State. Um, UNLV, Wyoming. And then you've got your nightcap, Washington State at Utah on FS1. Hawaii at Nevada on ESPN2. And UCLA at Arizona, of course. Your Pac-12 after dark menu. So, yeah, this is still a lot of good games on at 2.30. And then... You're just kind of hoping for a little bit of chaos at night. Like once it gets dark, you're just hoping something crazy happens. That's right. But back to this ball game, fascinating quarterback matchup with Brock Purdy and Charlie Brewer. Both of them. It, Baylor has been so far out of the limelight. I know. If they win this I game, think Matt Rule loves that. By the way. Oh, absolutely. He loves that. He nobody. Gets, he loved it that nobody knew his name in Temple, and yeah. nobody knew their quarterback's name, and nobody knew their defensive court. Like nobody knew anything about them, and they just go on the road and they beat people up, and they bring them into Philadelphia and they beat people up. They they got dudes. Oh. They got dudes at Baylor, man. They they got some real. Is it weird that we're gonna see a Big Twelve football game where they might play in a phone booth? <laughs> Because that's not Big 12 football. No. But, but, that's I, what but I also gonna, think... Do you think that's what's going to happen? Uh, no. Well... We're not going to have I can Oklahoma see it. State, Texas. I can see it going... We're not going to have every possession somebody scores. No, no, no. But I think you will see a lot of explosive plays because I think do these you? two quarterbacks are really good. Well, I think they're good, but um, I also think these defenses are good. I but think, I, and I think I, these coaches are going to coach... Very conservative. Conservative. And, and don't make big... But, they're going to be making big plays on defense. I think they're going to be aggressive on defense and conservative on offense. I, I could be wrong. I could be dead wrong. I mean, you might be right. I feel I like know, both man. these coaches want to play this game in a phone booth. Am I wrong? I don't think so. Okay. I might be. I don't, I don't, it could be big play explosion. Well, I mean, both of them are known for explosive plays so far this season. Yeah, but, but look that, at the schedule. But but also, o- also look at their the, defense. They also don't give up big plays, outs, and that's where... Outside of Iowa... Nobody has played anybody that could stop them from making big plays. That's true. That's that's the only thing that I'm not buying but, too too but much into. That. Even even Iowa didn't really didn't really stop them. I mean, they still had some really big plays. That's right. Um, as far as picks go, I'm gonna take Baylor plus three here, and oh, and I yes. think Baylor wins the game. I I love Matt Rule. I'm gonna tell you where I'd really like Matt Rule. I'd really like Matt Rule wearing brown and orange. <laughs> If I can make that happen, now I don't listen. I got an emergency twenty in my wallet. I'll send him. That's that's a, that's a short and skinny of what I got. But what? Listen, just listen. If that helps, yeah. I'll pass the plate. I'll put it in there. I could I could see him going. I'm sure, up there. Haslam's got a few more emergency twenties than I do. Uh, probably stashed away somewhere. It's it, well, Haslam. I think would probably hire him more to go to Tennessee and fix that mess. But true. I mean, we'll see. It's, it's amazing. Nobody talks about Matt Rule for any of these big jobs. Like he, what he has rebuilt at Baylor is unbelievable. Unbel- well, and he came from nowhere at Temple. Where was that Temple program when he took it over? Oh, it was. They were a no-name. Pro- I mean, they weren't. 
am I wrong to say they weren't far from UConn? They had game day. They, well, they were they were always better than UConn. But I'm not better but, than UConn, but, but not far from. Like, they they irrelevant. brought college game day to Temple. Correct. Now, granted, Notre Dame was going there, but like, that's. What what other AAC school has had that besides UCF? Yeah, and it took no. two years of being a national uh, championship like, program. They were, they were undefeated for two like, years before the yeah. game. They said, okay, we'll go. Yeah. And at that point, it was maybe only because like there wasn't anything else interesting going on, right? So, yeah. I, I, I am the biggest Matt Rule guy. I talk about Mike Leach far more than him because Washington. A, Mike Leach makes news all the time because yes. he's just goofy and quirky or whatever. I'm, I'm telling you. My my worship for this guy is just right there under him, and I want him at one of my places so bad. Yeah, that's a, Could you imagine if you had Leach, like maybe at LSU, and then Rule as the the Browns coach? Oh, no, no, Coach O's going to be there till he gives himself a heart attack. Well, I know, I know. I'm just saying, like, we, if, here's here. If I had it, to if build things the had perfect, worked out different, if I had the perfect SEC, I would put Leach at Ole Miss. I'd put Rule at Tennessee. That'd be fascinating. It would hurt LSU. It would really piss off Alabama. I'm okay with that. I'd yeah, take that trade would. off. I'd take probably that would. trade off. Yeah, I could. I, I, I still think Matt Rule is one of the best coaches in the country. I agree. Like I completely it, it, agree. I want to see him at a monster. You know where he'd look really good? Maze and Blue. Yeah. Yeah. Man. <laughs> That's it. You know what? He's doing just fine where he's at. I know the people at Baylor say, quit trying to sell our coach. Yeah. Hey. I love him, and nobody's talking. About, he just doesn't make news. Yeah. He doesn't make noise. Oh, he, he will when they're about ten and two this year. If if things go the way if that they I think play for the for the B twelve title. Oh yeah, yeah. People will know his name. Hundred percent, hundred percent. All right, let's move on from there. Let's talk about Washington State at Utah. Both these teams coming off a loss, Gary. This we was supposed to be the, as a big game. Yeah, this was supposed to be the um, winner. Of this wins the Pac twelve after last week. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, well, because they were both undefeated. Every time I say, well, it's up to this team now to to carry the water for the Pac-12. Yeah. They go down, and they go down hard. This is another (laughs) Washington State 9 p.m. kickoff on Saturday night when I'm, like, I swear to God. At least you're on God's time. I had to watch that UCLA thing from East Coast time. You people who live on the East Coast time, I feel sorry for you. That is no way to live life. No, that is, that is, that's that is real a stuff. horrible, horrible time zone. Oh, it, it, you. So you remember back over the summer if when I, was I went to, to ever take over the I world. I went to San Francisco. One of the first things I do would be eliminate the East Coast time, and now move y'all to God's time, yep. and we just have one central big ass central time. So, I went to San Francisco for a week, and then I came back and immediately went to Atlanta oh, for like yeah. two, three days, whatever oh. it was. I was so screwed up, like I. <laughs> And I look like a junkie walking around Atlanta. I was like, wait, what time is it? What is One of my favorite <laughs> things I ever did was I took the family. I know we're not even talking about this game. I apologize. Oh, no, we, we'll get to but it. We'll get to one it. One of my favorite things I've ever done was I took the family to San Diego during the fall. San Diego is beautiful year-round. does not matter when you go. Yep. It's perfect. Wake it up, eating a bowl of cereal, and not catching all the three hours of pregame, just turning it on in football. Like, yeah, it's 9 a.m. and. Oh, Oh, oh man! On. I could, I could it's, totally do this. Oh, th- it, it's why it's so great out in Vegas, right? I know. Like you wake up Saturday morning, it's time to roll. I know. Like just wake up, roll out of bed, pour still your hung bowl, over, pour your bowl of cereal and cereal and Jack Daniels. <laughs> I can't do that. I lead a different life in Vegas. Uh, Washington State is six and one against the spread in their last seven against Utah. Utah. Could be without quarterback Tyler Hundley in this game and running back Zach Moss. Now, they lost Moss quickly in that USC game. Correct. Hundley, of course, was spotted leaving the field limping at the end of the ballgame. Yards per play, Washington State number two in the country. 8.86 yards per play. Utah is number 21 with 6.89. Now, the difference is the opponent's yards per play, Washington State number 102. They give up 6.10 yards per play. Utah... Number 53, they give up over 5, 5.08, which is a little surprising. I, but I think so much of that came in with USC. in USC, right? Yeah. I mean, that all happened in one game. Yes. To throw that metric off. So along with Washington State being 6-1 and one against the spread in their last seven against Utah, 
Washington State also seven and three against the spread as a road dog. Utah six and four against the spread as a home favorite, but zero and three in their last three at home. Hmm. Kyle Whittingham, it is a widely known secret. We'll, we'll say that that he has trouble with air raid yes. teams. It is why Mike Leach has had success against him. I think that the line has caught up to that already. Ooh, I, th- I think the line is a reflecting strictly the injuries. Uh, well, that's a, I think it's a combination, right? Because it, it opened at eight. What are we at? Five and, five and a half. half. I just pulled it up. Five and a half. Find it now. Yeah, five so, and a half. And this is a 9 p.m. game on FS1. I, it's at Rice Stadium, I think by the because way. the line, the, the spread money is 51-49. So, I mean, it's, it's dead even. I, I think the line movement is strictly the no, I could be wrong. No, you, you might could be, be right. Wrong. You might be right. But five and a half seems a touch low here. If it uh, was if it was eight, this would be 90% of the people in Washington State. Like, yeah. You're not giving more than a touchdown to Mike Leach to anybody in the no, this is well. This is kind of the, well, maybe Washington, maybe. But every year Washington beats them by two touchdowns. I mean, it's, you know. Yeah, but I don't know that you make the line that still. Just maybe because maybe not. Um, this is in the dead zone. This is in the three and a half to to six. Yeah, Vegas range. just doesn't know what to do with it, and so just and, put and it in the Vegas zone. So at that point, the majority of people ain't gonna bet it because it's just it's right there. Well, we're not the majority of people, Gary. We most certainly are not. We are gonna make a pick on this game, uh, even though we have talked about everything from trips to the West Coast and back to the East Coast and everything else. <laughs> we're having fun tonight, apparently. Uh, I'm rolling with Utah minus the five and a half here. So it, it screams that it would be too easy to pick against Utah in the spot. And I think that coming back home in the altitude, like I, I think... In the altitude? What do you think Washington State is? The Prairies? No, this is in Salt Lake City. Where do you think Washington State plays? Uh, but they, it's, a, it's different. The sea level is different. Well, yes, it's different, but it's not like they're below sea level. It's not like they're in Gainesville. No, the air is thinner in Utah, in Salt Lake, than it is in Washington State. Okay. Am I am I crazy? I think YouTubers. I think y'all tell me. Hang on. If I I'm think crazy you're right. I don't know that it's marginally different. It, I'm not saying that that's going to make a huge difference on the game. I'm saying that you Utah. Made a point. So I think Utah. I, a, I took that as it's massively different. It's Florida going to Mile High. That's massively different. Yes. I could be wrong. I would just assume. You you might be right. I, you might I, be I right. might not be. I, Don't I, hold me to that. I just think Washington is mountains, <laughs> right? Washington, Washington is a mountainous region. And they're like kind of the middle of nowhere, Washington, which no, I would assume. They're definitely out in the woods. Is is mountains. But I, it, I could I don't, be wrong. I don't think they're in the mountains. Yeah, y'all tell me if I'm screwed up on we, this. We, we, I didn't write that down. I was just, I, I had it in my head. And I'm like, Utah, Salt Lake City. Like, it, no, it's yeah, definitely mountain region, and it is definitely yes. altitude, no doubt. Nope. So, and it, that's it, it, I've, I've heard people talk about it before. I know I've heard people talk about it. Try. So, like, but maybe the reason Washington State does well there is because it's the same, the same altitude. I don't know. I, I, I you got me. I, right. Either way, either way, the reason Washington State covers so much against Utah is because of their air raid attack, right? I think that they have a problem with holding on to the football. And I think Utah... Well, they have it for like, three and a half games. Three and three quarters games. Yeah, it was mainly just the second half against UCLA. One half of one game. Yeah. And I think that that can become a problem. Mm, I don't I'm know. not going to... I'm not saying that that's a reason why... The, I'm, I'm saying that Utah will be fired up to come back and We're figure this out. We're just going to go different directions in this. That's totally fine. Um, Utah, Utah did this last year. In a row. Like, remember, Utah does have guys that started, like, five or six games last year Yes. in the place of these guys. I think the line dropped because of the injuries. It seems like it would be really easy to bet Washington State here. So I'm going the opposite way. I'm going to take Utah and Kyle Whittingham's fighting Utes at home against the Washington State Cougars. Give me Leach. I figured you were going Leach. You, you taking Leach to win out, right? Yes. Oh, you like it ain't even a question. This ain't even a question. I don't. I don't see him losing many games. Two games in a row. I, I can understand that. I think. I think that last one was a little bit fluky. Well, yeah. That's why. I, bit that's, fluky. that's why I'm shocked that they lost it. 
Yeah. Yeah, you're right. All right, we are running long, so this is the last big game, and then we will do rapid fire. So this game... We get laughed at when we call something rapid fire. Yeah. I know that's my fault, but... No, it's all good. It's we, all good. We get laughed at. That's We, we have had I, some people talk about I, this in the cause comments. Because I, I do stuff. Because <laughs> like, I love how you say you're going to get through it quick, and then you argue for 10 minutes on the same yeah. subject. It's like, yeah, that's what we do. That's what makes the show entertaining. We're, we're not a well-oiled machine, and we've never claimed to be. Nope. And another not well-oiled machine is the Mississippi State Bulldogs. They are traveling to... Plains! Auburn, Alabama. They're going to be at Jordan-Hare Stadium, 6 p.m. on ESPN. Auburn is a 10.5-point favorite at home. Auburn, 5-0 and against the spread in their last five games. The question is, is quarterback Tommy Stevens back, or is this going to be a freshman versus freshman battle at the quarterback position. Mississippi State, 4-2 and two against the spread in their last six against Auburn. 4-4 four and four against the spread their last eight as an underdog at Auburn. Now, that goes back forever. Yeah. Um, but I figured it was worth tossing out there because it's basically dead even. Mississippi State, number 48 in yards per play this year. On offense, 6.27 yards per play. Auburn is number 80, 5.62 and then you swip it up, or swi uh, 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 swap it up. Switch that go. defense, baby. Opponents yards per play, Mississippi State number 83, giving up 5.65. Not great. Auburn, number 31. So, I mean, it's this is not top 25, anything like that, but 31. 31 but you got to see who they've played as opposed but, to some exactly. of those top 10 teams. So, playing at Texas A&M and playing against Auburn and then playing Lane. Tulane. And Georgia. I mean, not uh, Georgia, and Oregon. They played. Well, that's what I said. Oregon, Oregon Texas A&M, and, yeah, and then Tulane. Tulane. And Kent State was the other one, but that didn't matter. Um, but yeah, four point six three yards per play is what they are giving up so far. Three incredible teams. This see this line seemed really big early. Uh, it got all the way up to eleven. Yep. It is now back down to ten and a half. Dip to touch. It still seems like a ton of points, but I also like Mississippi State destroyed this team last year, but these are completely different teams. No question. Like, you you no longer have Jonathan Abram or or uh, Sweat or Simmons, any of those guys for Mississippi State to shut down a lackluster Auburn offense. And Auburn has gotten back to their bread and butter. They are running the football and keeping the ball away from the other team. Auburn um, offense has speed like nobody's business. Yeah. And on defense, Mississippi State might not score. Oh, I don't buy that. I think I think that State will score. Uh, what is the over-under on this? Does it tell you? Yeah, 48 and a half. 48 and a half. Man, I think State will, will find a way to score. Um because this Auburn defense is built a lot like some of those early Michigan State Don Brown defenses. All right. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt. Vegas Insider has it 48 and a half, but when you actually go to betting sites, most of them have it 46 and a half. Oh, so it's moving quite a bit. And it's going down because Vegas Insider has 92% on the under. That line is going to get pumped down. Yeah, that makes sense. We're, we're doing this late, late Tuesday night. I am going to bet by the time anybody hears this and gets this information. That It'll numbers, probably be 45. It's going to be small. <laughs> it's going to keep going down. Uh, all right. Um, so, so yeah. So, 46 and a half currently is the total. This, I don't think that Mississippi State is, is void of talent. No, I don't either. I think that they've got dudes. And I think that this is a prime letdown spot. For Auburn coming off of a massive road win over a top 12 opponent. Like, this is a good spot for... Now, I don't think Mississippi State has any prayer of winning this football game. I do like the quarterback, Garrett Schroeder. I have a uh, hard trader. time, hard time anyway. betting the dog if I don't think they have a chance to win the game. Now, unless you're talking about 25, 30-point lines... I really have a hard time betting a dog, even at a 10 or an 11-point line, 12, 13-point line, in the under two touchdowns, if if I don't think they have a prayer of winning the game, I can't swallow this for once. The reason that I would go this this other way, okay, 
these two teams, this is an SEC game. I think that they will both eat up clock. I think they both like explosive plays and all that kind of mess. But they do both love to run the football. Kylan Hill for Mississippi State, I mean, he's what, number four in the country? Like in, in not a lot Russia. of people have ran the football in Auburn though. No, no, I'm with you. Can but, they? That's where I'm that's why I, but, but why I said State, what I said about the defense. State is also capable of throwing the ball to the wide receiver, et cetera. I you you think that Moorhead doesn't know that you're not gonna be able to just run it right up the gut. I understand. <laughs> I understand I, where I you're think Moorhead doesn't know a lot. But, but that's that's my opinion of Moorhead, which is right. very different than most people's opinion of Moorhead. I, I think he is at least smart enough to devise a game plan to keep Auburn on their heels a little bit. Okay. Right? I don't I don't think that they're gonna ask uh the, the quarterback Shre- what is this? Is it the, Schrader? The new guy? Yes. God bless him. I don't know. I don't know who the freshman is. Um, I'm not going to pretend that I did. Here, I can pull that up. I got super, it. Super I got fast. it. You keep, you keep um, going. But I, I, I don't think they're going to ask him to do anything crazy. They're not going to put him in a bad position. Kind of like, I mean, obviously track record. They did it with Nick Fitzgerald. Uh, but this kid, I, I think they're they're walking him along. They're going to they, – they he played really well against Kentucky last week. Now, granted, Kentucky Garrett, was yeah, at home. Garrett Schrader. Schrader. That is you, it. Okay. You were doing right. So, I, again, I don't think that Mississippi State Six wins four, the football two game. Yeah, he's a big old boy. That's it. What a small man. That's, I think that State can keep this within 10. State's points, yeah. I'm, I'm 100% taking those points. Uh, give me Mississippi State plus the 10 and a half. Auburn win the game. And Auburn win the game. So I'm, I'm going to take Auburn. I think this is an opportunity that Gus Malzahn sees a one of the softer SEC defenses he's going to have a chance at, and he's got to get right. He's got to figure this offense out other than just gimmick speed plays, and, and I think this is an opportunity for him to come home in a safe environment where it's not going to be crazy loud and his quarterback can communicate and, and I think they're going to actually try, which would help the under, by the way, would try to develop an actual offense and not just survive off big play after big play, explosive play after explosive play. And I do believe that this defense can shut down Mississippi State. That is not necessarily my dislike and disapproval of Moorhead, but if they do throw a true freshman quarterback out there against this defense – I think this is one of the nastiest defenses in the SEC, if not the best defense in the SEC. And I think you're, I think you're 100 right. Like this is a their filthy front, defense. their front seven is going to hurt people. Uh, now I did see that Derek Brown is uh, questionable to play. He he is one of but four he's one monsters of, yeah. that they have that are coming for you. Yeah, and that's that's my fear is, you know, I I just don't. I don't see sustainable offenses for Mississippi State. For Mississippi State to score, Mississippi State is going to have to have explosive plays because they're not driving the ball 85, 80 yards, 75 yards on them and scoring touchdowns. Nobody's done it all year. This state offense isn't coming to the plains and doing it. Um, so looking at just one of the metrics that I like to use, okay. uh, Bill Conley over at ESPN now was at SB Nation. Uh, the SP Plus ratings mm-hmm. – Mississippi State is currently the number 14 SP Plus team in the country. Okay. Auburn is number 10. Okay. Mississippi State, number 17 offense. This is based on efficiency metrics. Uh, but Mississippi State, number 17 on offense. Auburn is number 31. Uh, Mississippi State is number 32 on defense. Auburn is number 6. So, so those offensive stats are with a quarterback that's probably not going to play, though. Um, yeah, you might be right. This is right. why when you have a quarterback change because of injury, you you can't. That's just why those numbers at, just jump up. You right? can't just look at past, you know. Yeah, because it, it, that's why the line looked so weird. Correct. Now there is a chance that Tommy Stevens actually plays. Oh, you're 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 hundred percent right. Now I will tell you this: I would rather against a defense like this, I'd rather have a healthy freshman than a banged up Tommy Stevenson because a banged up Tommy Stevenson going against this. Front seven is going to end up being a way more hurt, Thomas. Yeah, now you're right. And if you're, you're right. Tommy, if Stevens. you're trying to play the long game, if you're Mississippi State and think we still got to fight to win eight, nine, ten games this year, 
we can't get Tommy hurt in this one. Let's not have him on the road taking a beating against the best defense we're going to play all year. That's true. Let's let's let him sit down. Let's throw the kid in there and let's see what the kid's got. That's and a good if the point. kid's got the moxie and he can hang. Well, he had the moxie against Kentucky for sure. That's right. That's right. Oh no, he played great against and we like Kentucky. This is these yeah. two guys that, that are that are big big on Kentucky. Now you are you are 100% so, right. So so I mean that. if he's got it to go to the plains, then maybe you don't worry about Tommy anymore and it, it's just the way the cookie crumbles. That is the way. I that would rather have a 100% guy against this Auburn defense than somebody who's not 100. I don't care how talented he is. Now you you might be right. You might be right. All right, let's let's uh, let's move into rapid fire. You ready uh, for that? We will rapid fire. Yes, rapid fire for real. Getting late. Ohio State minus 18 at Nebraska. And enough points. <sighs> yeah, I think you're probably right. I think Ohio State absolutely dominates these guys. Nebraska has been able to put up points. I know the metrics but- actually disagree with that, right? No, the metrics actually say Ohio State minus like 22. So I thought the metrics said around 16. I thought no, this line was a couple no. points too high. Minus, minus 22. Okay, then I feel better about it. So. Because I, I just think, I watch with my eyeballs, Nebraska has played nobody. Yeah. The one tough team that they've played, and it's a good team, not a great team, they got beat. Yeah. And they've given up 40 points to everyone that has any sense of an offense. Yeah. I they, mean, uh, you they just let the Black Santa Claus come in and give you all you want. <laughs> <laughs> How does that happen? So that was that was on the road, and it was the week before. It the was on Ohio the road. State it was to Illinois. How many people do you think were in that stadium? So you don't have home field advantage, but sure. But you're. Yeah, I bet they did. Confines I bet, and I bet whatnot. more. I bet there were more Nebraska fans there than Illinois fans. Oh, you're probably right about that. You're probably right. All right, let's talk about Friday night game. Arizona State at Cal. Cal is a four and a half point favorite. Cal's last chance for the back twelve. The only undefeated team left in the Pac-12. Every Arizona time State. I've said that, that team has fallen. Yep. Arizona State, of course, on came off of a uh, just heartbreaking last-second loss to Colorado at home. Um, man, it, uh, these are two really good defenses. That I, I like this Cal team a lot. I thought the heat and humidity was going to affect them at Ole Miss. That was the Chase only reason Gruber, why, and it did not. Like, their quarterback, Chase Gruber, is... I wonder if I'm saying that right. Gruber, Graber, Gruber. Either way, either I'm not way, an enunciation guy. You not, know, I'm going to get that wrong. Not, uh, not super important in this spot since we are rapid firing. Um, I, I like Arizona State here because Cal, of course, came all the way across the country, got a big win. Um, now they know that they are the only undefeated team left, and Arizona State going to be looking for blood after losing at home last week. Do we get any Pac-12 chicanery trying to keep? A Pac-12 team undefeated. Absolutely not. I don't know Cal. that we agree with. I don't care. It's, it's, this conference has not made a good decision in the lifetime of being the Pac-12 conference. Okay. From an administration point down, a, a they one, haven't made a good choice yet. A one-loss Oregon, USC, Utah, or Washington would all look better than an undefeated Cal, and it wouldn't matter. I understand what but you're saying. I don't saying. know that they know that or believe that. The, who? The Pac-12? Yes. They 100% know that. I Those know. are massively bigger brands. You were talking about expecting these people to know what the hell they're doing, I, I think Larry Scott knows at least that. Oh now, I think gosh. it would be a mistake. You you and I greatly disagree on what Larry Scott knows. No, I'm, I'm saying that because I don't think that, like, I think that Cal would deserve a shot at the table. Or a, a spot at the table, but I think Larry Scott might be one of the worst administrators, not just in college football, but maybe in administrative history. You might be right. I mean, I think this guy is, I think this guy is exceptionally bad at his job. Yeah, and they just oh, I, I think everybody place. agrees with that part. Um, you take Cal there. Yeah, uh, yeah we, I love Wilcox. Yes. Okay, we'll go fast. And I'm, yes. I'm going Arizona State. Yes. Uh, Kansas State at Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State a five point favorite. Uh, Chris Kleiman doing some doing some work in Manhattan, Kansas. Uh, Oklahoma State coming off of a I won't call it a last second loss, um, but they they did have the ball with the chance to win. I guess they kicked um, too many damn field goals. Yeah, they just got super conservative inside the ten yard. The whole game. Strong. Yeah, uh, Kansas State, however, super efficient. This is like Wisconsin of the Midwest. Of the even more 
uh, even more west. I was just whatever. About to say. Like yeah. <laughs> Wisconsin's already kind of Midwest, right? Yeah, well, um, yeah. It is but, the definition but this of Midwest. this team looks exactly like that kind of team. Like they they do have different. Poor, offensive poor principles. man's Wisconsin. Can we at least say poor man's Wisconsin? Poor man's Wisconsin. Okay, one hundred percent. We they have to understand patient. that there is a substantial difference yes. between these two, even though they play the same style of football. They they look very similar. They do not make mistakes. They do not oh, beat themselves. They don't fumble. They don't create uh, uh, commit penalties, and and that is just insane. This. Like Oklahoma State obviously has more flash, more speed, yes. more whatever. Yes. But yes. man, like you got a freshman quarterback going up against Kansas State right now. Like I'd be terrified. I'd be terrified. I'd I'd probably roll Kansas State in the points here, uh, just because I don't like to bet uh, against teams that don't beat themselves. And Kansas State is that kind of team. What did we got? We got, got chicanery. We got chicanery. All right. We got. Uh, it I opened. I hate that against Gundy. Oh. It opened at Oklahoma State minus seven and a half. It has dropped to four and a half, even though eighty-five percent of the tickets are on Oklahoma State. So, if I have to make a pick in this, I'm going to pick Kansas State. But there's no world in which I live in that I will put money against my team. I can understand that. I just don't like doing it. Now, obviously, so these stats that we use, you can find them over at VegasInsider.com. You can find. Action Stuff like Network. this over at the Action Network. And what, what is another uh, Don place? Best, I believe, has it. Yes. Um, there's there's a bunch of different... Uh, you can go search You can it search it's the easy. internet and you can find where... Because there's a lot of places that have this. That's right. Um, also, and we get asked all the time, where do we get it from? That's why I tried to... I use Vegas Insider. Gary uses a lot of stuff. I'm a very simple man and not, <laughs> not as computer literate as I look, which doesn't look right. It, took me, so, it took me years to be able to get... So I, I find one place that I like things, and I get it there every And time. it's easy to find it here. But, yeah, the fact that uh, Vegas Insider's got 85% of the bets coming in on Oklahoma State, and the line has dropped three points three since points. Sunday, and we're recording on Tuesday night, that's yeah. absurd. Absolutely absurd. With that information alone, I take Kansas State. I yeah. make it a rule. I yeah, no, make, never bet against the house. rattlesnake. Yeah. Uh, Clemson at North Carolina. North Carolina is a 27-point dog at home. Uh, if you're going to lose at home to App State, you're probably going to lose at home to Clemson. <laughs> this is not a big game either. It's this a, is not even a throw-in it's game. It's at least a, it's a throw-in it's game. It's an interesting matchup. Line. We're talking Mac Brown against Dabo Sweeney. It's what a 30-point ta- number. It's a 27-point number. This is at least interesting because Sam Howell is a fantastic quarterback, and I'm curious, is Trevor Lawrence ever going to get on track? Like, will they ever get to a point where they are efficient this year? And and they haven't been. Like, they, 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 they have, have been. beaten the doors off of everybody. But I'm wondering, do they put it together in this spot and, and finally get this thing? I, you know, I'm going to talk about it every That's week, fine. trying to figure out what, like... I know. When I is it going to click? We'll and it hasn't. Keep, we'll just keep talking about the big teams that don't play anybody. Speaking of big teams, Wake Forest at Boston College. Boston. College. This is a really good matchup. This though. is a fantastic matchup. It's not a big game. It's a good matchup. But Boston College plus seven at home. Wake Forest, like they, they win this game. I mean, you, you're looking at maybe a nine and zero Wake Forest going up against Clemson late in the year with a chance to maybe pull the upset if you got a super inefficient. Clip. I'm just messing around. It's not gonna happen, but that'll be a thirty point line. It probably yeah they'll and, and they'll probably have game day there. Hang on, it'll, um, it'll be a twenty seven and a half point line. But either way, I'm just saying, uh, I kind of like Boston College in this spot. I'm this is my gambling picks. Yeah, it's in mine too. We'll uh, we'll talk about it. Friday night game again, Penn State at Maryland. Maryland, a seven-point dog. This in your gambling picks, right? This is my gambling, and this is going to be a fun game. This is absolutely going to be a fun game. This is going to be a really fun Um, game. Penn State. Not a 30-point line. Penn State has beaten the crap out of everybody but Pitt. But if you actually go look at the numbers, they ain't real, real impressive. Yards per play, yards per play against, and the quality of opponents that they have played. Yeah. Not good at all. Pitt's the only guy, team worth a damn, and they barely, they struggled against Pitt. Yeah. Thursday night, you got Navy at Memphis. 
the midshipmen coming into our backyard. It's our house. Thinking they gonna come into the Liberty Bowl and get a win? Are you kidding me? We have a naval base in Memphis. Bet well, you in, know in, that. In Millington. In the, so it's, it's not Memphis. We don't claim God. Millington. Where do we live? Well, we live south. Not in Memphis, but... Where do we, I work? We live in Memphis. I mean, well, yeah. But Millington is, is a different... I mean, we love y'all, Millington. It's just a little different area. I, I can't work with this. That's a <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I hope that Memphis gets the win. We'll just say that. I don't know which way Navy's, to go on that one. Navy's had their... Navy's had their number. Number. Like, yeah, it's, Memphis is it's one gonna, and three it's, against It's not going to rain, is it? Because 100% of the time we play Navy and it rains, yeah, we, we get lose. the doors blown off of us. Not yeah. just lose. No, we don't get the doors blown. When it rained last year, we lost by one point. What about, we were favored oh, by like 10. What yeah. about the year we were favored by like 19 at Navy and it was a monsoon? We got beat by like 20. That was, that was it. That was the one no, last year. No, that wasn't last year. That was two years ago. No, it was last year because now they're playing in Memphis this year. And then it's here. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was it was it was not a one point game. Navy beat the crap out of them a couple of years ago. Um, maybe it was three years ago. Yeah, it was it was like three years ago. I, it, it, I don't I don't know that it rained, but they did absolutely. Oh, it was beat the them monsoon. Now you might be that man. I don't remember. I don't remember. They've only played four times. Memphis is one and three against the spread. Um, what are we straight up? Straight up one and three. That's what I thought. Yeah, one and three straight <laughs> up. One and three against the spread. Oh God. Uh. All right, last two, Louisiana at Georgia Southern. This is a fascinating game. If you want, like, this is ESPN Plus, I'm telling you. You need to go watch Billy Napier's team. You need to go watch Georgia Southern. These are two fantastic football teams that, that play different types of offenses and whatnot. If you find yourself bored yep. with the big games, these teams are legit. They are a lot of fun to watch. They have talent. These are not yes. no-name guys. Like, these dudes can play ball. There yeah. are guys on these teams that will play on Sundays. Yeah, Louisiana at Georgia Southern. That is a fantastic Saturday afternoon game. Finally, last one, Kentucky at South Carolina. South Carolina is favored in this game. I have no idea why South Carolina would be favored in any SEC matchup this year. Kentucky has beaten them five straight times. Straight up. So I have to say something at this point in juncture in the thing. I have, I have tried for two years now to make South Carolina a thing. And this offseason. Oh, I, I tried to help you last year. I know. And, and you, this, you remember us talking I, to Felica? I know. I know. <laughs> and he was I like, know. y'all are riding over seven and a half. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> and, then, and then this year, I have tried to make Northwestern yeah. a thing. So, sorry, buddies, with, with, with Northwestern. Listen, the Westlot Pirates. It, yeah. Neither one of those things, they're not a thing. No. They're not, they're not a thing. I'm out. Yeah. It's going to wrap up the preview show. Of course, go over to DunicaTravel.com. <laughs> uh, you can go bet against uh, South Carolina this weekend. Uh, saying that, they'll probably cover. So just watch yourself. Get your numbers straight. Uh, go to TunicaTravel.com. Find more information about all six of their incredible sports books. You can find more information about us over at WinningCuresEverything.com. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe to the podcast. Leave some nice reviews. Leave some nice comments. We appreciate you guys being here. We will see you all again the next go round. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.